welcome. Our, our, our spiritual practice today, uh, to quote uh, John Templeton, is see beyond the activities of personality to the greater spiritual force of the immortal soul. So I've been speaking a lot. I haven't used the word soul very much, but much of what I'm saying can be related to the traditional notion of soul. Um, and uh, we find notions of soul in, in the Christian tradition. Uh, we can find this notion in, in Islam as well. We can also find various notions of soul in the, in the Hindu tradition. In Buddhism, it's, it, there's a different understanding of what we might think of as the soul. But uh, what is the soul? How would we become acquainted with our soul? Let's for a moment put aside any, any qualms we may have about whether there is a soul or not, and let's just function from the standpoint of, of having a soul. You know, it's funny. Sometimes when I'm, I'm ask, I'll ask a, a, class, a, a classroom, I'll say to people in a classroom, well, maybe often I have a lot of psychology and neuroscience majors and biology majors, and I'll say, uh, okay, so is there anybody here who doesn't have a soul? Any, any soulless people in the room? And almost never does anyone raise his or her hand to say, no, I don't have a soul. <laughs> Occasionally, however, there is one resolute person who says, no, I don't have a soul. Because after all, what is a soul, right? And for such a person, I understand soul would be a kind of, it's a metaphor, it's a rich metaphor from history for brain activity. I mean, if I have a brain, and so I have a soul. If my brain stops, my soul is gone. That's the bit. That's modern materialism. That's a familiar idea. It could possibly even be true. Of course, there's no way of absolutely verifying it, uh, or or disconfirming it either, for that matter. And as long as it's an open question, metaphysical question like that, there's no reason why we should just assume there is no soul. We probably can't just assume there's a soul either. Regardless, it doesn't matter whether we have souls or not. We feel it feels like we have a soul. Many of us feel like we have a deep inner life, and uh, when we're in very soulful moments, we'll really be certain that the poetry that moves me is touching my soul. If when I die, it's all gone, I'm not going to know in any case. So I might as well live as if I have a soul because I certainly feel like I have a soul. All right. So, at any case, um, uh, how? How can we uh, come, let's say that that's a bit facetiously stated, um, it's a serious question. Do, do we actually have a spiritual depth within us? Well, let's at least try to discover it. That's what the practice today will be about. Sir John writes, when we open our minds to light and truth, there need never be a time when we are at a loss for ideas, inspiration, or guidance. And this is where the the practice comes in. Can you see beyond the activities of the personality to the greater spiritual force of the immortal soul? What kind of seeing is this? Well, to call upon Plotinus, the last great philosopher of Western antiquity, uh, he expressed this idea at least as memorably as Emerson when he spoke about being a, a newborn bard of the Holy Ghost. He spoke in a different language from a different uh, context, he wrote, um, you do not see the blessed sight, the, the one, the good, with your physical eyes. No, you must close these eyes and call upon another vision, which is to be awakened within you, a vision which everyone possesses, but which few make use of, which few apply. So he called upon us to awaken another seeing, a seeing with the eyes of our soul, a spiritual seeing. And this seeing only occurs when these eyes are closed. And they don't have to necessarily physically be closed. But the idea here, and this is essential to the notion of mysticism, because the Greek word mysticism means to close, to close what? In this case, to close the eyes. We close our eyes and we awaken an inner seeing, an inner vision. And it's this inner seeing that connects us with the, uh, with the gnosis of, of, of the divine. It connects us with chokhmah, with hikmah. It connects us with, uh, with the Tao. It connects us with it connects us with Atman. Um, 
And so how do we awaken that? So that will be our practice. We'll try to see if we cannot awaken this in the few minutes that are, are with us, uh, that are remaining today. All right, so um, we can begin. Let's begin. This will be more of one of the quiet sitting under the tree type meditations. And uh, let's begin with an intention. One way to clear the decks, if you will, is to uh, come up with an intention. It can be for a quiet mind, for reduction of stress or anxiety. You may wish well-being for yourself and others. You may bring in religious and spiritual intentions. But the idea here is to focus your mind. Focusing the mind is the essential step in these sitting under the tree type meditations. So, spend a moment with that intention and really intent, focus on it with some intensity. And you'll find now that a degree of stillness has come into your awareness. All right, now, if you can, in this stillness, locate your body as a whole in your mind. So, basically trace an outline mentally of your body. Your eyes perhaps are closed. You're in a relatively calm state of mind. You can sense the boundaries of your bodily form. And if you will, mentally trace the boundaries of your body. Now that you're, you, you've become aware of, of your body and its outline, you, you have a sense of your body as standing over against the, the world of which we're a part. Now let's go a step further and do the same with our minds. Although the mind, of course, has no boundary, so it is kind of hard to, to kind of uh, trace its outline. So what we can do instead is we can imagine that our minds are like a chest. Our minds are like a big box, a kind of chest from a, a story which would be filled with treasures and jewels, a treasure chest. And now uh, imagine that all of the ideas that arise in your mind, they're all inside that chest. Don't let them out of the chest. Boredom, thinking about what you have to do after this video is over. That whole range of mental contents, just keep placing all of those thoughts inside of this great container. The next thought that comes, put it inside the, 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 the box, the treasure chest. The next feeling, the next sensation, just keep doing that. Every time a thought arises, just take it and put it inside this chest. All right, now I'd like you to close the chest. Just close it. And just be still. Now imagine that the chest, the box, disappears. And what's left is a kind of broad expanse of stillness and quietness, sort of like a still pond stretching off beyond uh, the range of sight. Your mind is as still as that still pond. There isn't a ripple in the pond. And now imagine that from somewhere behind the scene, the rays of the sun begin illumining that still surface of water. And it begins to sparkle the way water sometimes sparkles when the sunshine is reflected off of it. Just stay with that image of the sparkling expanse of water. Don't let yourself be led anywhere else. Just stay with this radiant image of the sparkling sunlight on this placid pool of water. That's your mind. That's yourself. That's your soul. That quietness, that sense of contentment, that feeling of peace, that brightness. And over time, you can actually dispense with all of the imagery and just abide in that state of complete calmness. 
the state of uncreated being, the state of emptiness of Brahman, of the God beyond all gods, of the divine absolute reality, of shunyata, of whatever. Just be. This is the greater spiritual force of the immortal soul, wrote an ancient, an ancient writer, the, of, of the good, the uncreated light of Gregory of Pal Palamas, emptiness, the supreme Brahman. You have awakened that inner vision that sees with the inner eyes rather than the outer eyes.